Hey everyone, and specifically hello to Andy. I have another commission saber to break down, um, so I'm just gonna put together this quick video to run through some of the features of it, um, talk about the install. Um, it's a really special one. I've wanted to get my hands on one of these for a while, and Andy referred to it as the Excalibur of his collection, um, and I can now see why. So I've got, got the, uh, the Michael Jackson glove on because this one is another fingerprint magnet, it's chrome plated. This is a Watto's Junkyard, Mr. Tyrannus, Gen 2, um, and I think it's the Elite version as well. Um, but yeah, this is an absolutely gorgeous saber. It's very heavy, it's machined super, super well. It's not perfect, no, I mean, no saber is perfect. Um, there's like some little discrepancies that if they ever do a Gen 3, I'd love for them to address. Um, but until that Gen 3 comes around, this is pretty damn good. Um, it's, it's just phenomenal, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, yeah, so let's talk about this. So the install um, was a complete nightmare, to be honest. Basically, the Gen 2 has not been installed by many people um, that I could find. In fact, I don't think I found any installed videos of a Gen 2. Um, so I was kind of flying blind for a lot of this. Uh, one thing that had changed between Gen 1 and Gen 2 is that the inside of the hilt down in the elbow section down here is now anodized. And that means that the Goth chassis, which is the one that we went with for this one, Printed in printed in nylon from Shapeways, um, the Goth chassis does not quite fit. It's very, 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 very snug, too snug to be workable. Um, so we had a bit of a back and forth between myself, Wattos, and Rick at Goth 3 Designs, um, so we could try and work out where the problem was coming from, if the Shapeways print needed to change, perhaps. Um, and this, the, the, we identified the cause as being the anodizing on the inside. It makes the tolerances off by just a, a hair, just enough for the, an already snug install to be too snug. Um, so for this one in particular, there is a new recharge module coming because the battery in this hill is not removable. It requires a recharge module which clicks into the bottom and re will recharge the battery. There is a new one of those coming with a slightly different tolerance. The soundboard module, however, I was managed to get, to, uh, managed to get fitting. Um, it was a bit of a headache to get it working, but we got there in the end. Uh, the switch solution up top is also brand new for Gen 2, so I had to figure that out. Um, and yeah, I mean, a lot of the instructions on the Goth website could apply to from Gen 1 to Gen 2, but there were some modifications that had to be made. Um, I had to drill a couple holes in a few spots to make everything work, but I am really happy with the end result. Hopefully you're happy with it too, Andy. Um, so let's take a look at the inside now. Uh, it's got a plated blade plug on top. Um, if you're going to put a blade in, you need to first remove the blade plug. It takes a, I don't know the size of it off the top of my head, I think it's a 1mm Allen key in the top, just hidden under the bottom of the claw here. And that unscrews the retention, and then you can slide the blade plug out, drop that to one side. And when you're using a blade, instead you want to fit on this magnetized ring. So I fit the magnets in that, and basically, without dropping it, basically it just clicks into place up here. If you angle it correctly, there we go. So that clicks in, that's not gonna come off. And that just makes the aesthetic at the top a bit nicer and it matches the, um, the prop closer as well. Uh, I'm just gonna drop in a blade. It is a 7 8 inch, 7 8 inch blade, not a one inch. Um, again, with all NeoPixel blades, kind of push it down. It's, a, it's not a snug fit, it's really quite loose, this one. Um, so go down until you feel the, the kind of sponginess of the pins, hold it down a little bit, making sure it's making good contact and then tighten up the screw. Don't over tighten it. I've had to do quite a few repairs lately on grub screws, retention screws that have been over tightened. And it's never fun because it's a real pain to fix. That feels good, it's just kind of finger tighten, that's all you need. Okay, so this is what it looks like with the blade in. Obviously this blade is tiny. Um, a few cosmetic changes that we made, or that I made to the hilt, the, the grip rubber material that was provided was too thick. Um, so Wattos are doing a run of like accessories and add-on parts for this hilt, including some thinner grip material. So what I did was I stripped the old grips off, I had to shave down the new rubber material along the edges ever so slightly to get the fit um, as flush as I wanted it to be, but I'm really happy with the end result. Um, so I reseated the grips. Yeah, these are held on with adhesive tape at the moment. Um, I might swap it out for some stronger tape because they can come loose if you're not careful. Um, but that can be a cosmetic thing. I'll see how it handles when I'm testing it more before I ship it out to Andy, so we'll see how that goes. Um, there's been a hole drilled on the inside of the hilt down here for shine through from an LED that sits inside the soundboard. Um, and then there's been some LEDs mounted 
in the pommel along with the speaker. So in order to operate this Sabre, um, which I just got a whopping great fingerprint on, um, in order to operate this Sabre, you unscrew the lower pommel using the cover tech. Um, I have epoxied the cover tech onto the screw, so you can just use the cover tech as a thumb screw basically, give it a couple twists, and that will loosen up the lower pommel section. So now this bit down here is very snug. It's intentionally designed that way because the pins that make contact with the battery section of the chassis, which lives up inside, they have to be aligned properly. The pins are really, really delicate. If they're not aligned properly, you risk snapping one of them and that's not gonna be any fun. Um, so it is snug, you may need to give it it shouldn't require too much force, but it's it's a quite a hook to get it out. So if you grab just the bottom pommel, give it a yank, and a little shimmy, the whole thing comes out. Obviously be careful when it's coming out. You don't want to knock any of the pins and damage those. You also don't want to touch any of the pins to the inside of the hilt and risk shorting anything. There's no battery in this lower section, but get in the habit of being careful when you're putting this in and pulling it out, because if anything's going to break, it's going to be these pins. They're the thing that will get the most wear. And they're also the most fragile, unfortunately. Um, so let's talk about this chassis. It's fantastic. Rick has completely nailed it with this one. It's designing chassis for curved hilts. There's no easy feat. And this one is very, very elegant in the way that he's done it. So this lower section holds a 24mm um, speaker, an accent LED, an accent strip of about six pixels, I think it was, the soundboard, the kill switch, and these pins up front. And the pins basically carry all of the electricity down from the battery into the soundboard module and anything from the soundboard module that needs to go up goes up through these smaller pins as well it's a fantastic design really snug it was not an easy install it's very very tight um but i'm glad i got everything working one thing that is worth mentioning is that the in order for this chassis to fit you have to order an additional add-on which we only found out about after we picked this chassis and ordered the parts in so that was an unexpected cost unfortunately but it's not actually that expensive i think this steel cage was about 15 pounds 20 pounds from watto's um, it's just an alternate version of one of the pieces that comes with the kit where because this is made of steel they could afford to make one of the rails here on this side thinner which means you can actually fit a soundboard in um, without this thinner steel cage, there is just no diameter that you could fit something like a CFX board or even a profi board. It's just too snug. Um, so that was an add-on piece that we had to order. Um, and Watto's also threw in the grips for free, which was very nice of them. Um, so yeah, that's this entire lower section. In order to operate the Sabre, you're basically going to flip this kill switch. Um, when it's pointing, when the kill switch is closest to the pommel, it is off. When the kill switch is pointing towards the pins, it's on. So you flip it on. Um, when you're putting this back inside the Sabre, sometimes, depending on how you've oriented it on the way in, the kill switch will catch on the outside of the hilt and it will just push the kill switch off again. So I've installed the kill switch this way intentionally as kind of like a indicator that you may be installing it at the wrong angle. If the kill switch is flipped on and you go to put it into the hilt and the hilt itself pushes the kill switch off, your rotation is probably a little bit out. So you want to pull it out again, flip the kill switch, and then try it again with slightly different rotation. Um, it kind of, I don't want to say it fully self-aligns with the pins because it doesn't. You have to make sure you kind of eyeball it and get it straight. But obviously this kind of clasp piece at the top will only fit on the matching indent on the rest of the hilt. Let's try and find a good angle to see this there. Um, it'll only fit on there. So it's kind of, it's got to go in one way. Um, it's quite hard to mess it up, but don't apply too much force. Just be nice and gentle with it. It's it's not like a whack. It's a gentle push, 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 click. That's all it needs. So I flip the kill switch on. Um, I'm going to put the module back in now. Uh, if you look inside, down inside the hilt, you can see uh, well, you probably can't see because it's too dark, but there's two rows of pins. There's three fat ones down the bottom and then four thin ones along the top. The three fat ones obviously align with the three fat ones on the soundboard module. So I'm just going to slide that in. Um, and as a point of reference, the LED on the bottom of the sound module should point towards the red button on the hill. So let's slide this back in now. Just going to eyeball it by lining it up like that to start with, kind of as level as I can. And I'm going to gently give it a push. Getting it past the first bit is a bit of a pain. You might have to give it a little shimmy, but it will go there. And then once it's started, it's kind of held in by friction. So you can kind of just gently drive it the rest of the way. Gentle, gentle. I've got to rotate it a touch so it lines up, which is fine, like that. Uh, I'm going to keep an eye on the kill switch as it goes in, in case the kill switch catches. Doesn't look like it's going to. Oh, it did catch, so I'm just going to back it out a bit. Flip the kill switch again. Oh, come on. Back it out. Flip the kill switch. I'm just going to make sure that goes in without triggering the kill switch again. Like that. And then when you push it home, gentle. It is obvious. 
importance of this contest cannot be decided by our knowledge of the Force, so but by our skills with a lightsaber. Thank you, Dooku. Uh, you will see the accent LED lights up and illuminates through the button, through the hole that I've drilled. You'll also hear that boot sound. And if you look in the bottom of the pommel, you will also see some... It's really bright, oh my god. You will also see some spinning accent lighting down in there, which will match the blade color for whatever font you have selected. So once the uh, kill key is switched, the board is reinstalled and the connection is correct because the, um, the accent LED has lit and we've heard a boot sound. You can then use the cover tech to screw the lower pommel back in place. Twist, 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 twist. Doesn't need to go super tight, just needs to be kind of until you start to feel some resistance because all it's doing is just holding that lower piece in. Um, and then we're away. So up top, we have a, a tactile switch. Um, this thing is running with an 18, 18650 battery. Um, everything is connected, it's good to go. It's using the FET 263 one button profi board config, which I will send to you so you can reference that. I'm actually not super familiar with the one button setup off the top of my head, so I am gonna be referencing this as I run through some of the controls. But here we go. So a couple sound fonts on there. It's a combination of mainly Dooku fonts and then I threw some extra ones on there as well because Andy said he wanted some freebies so I just picked some of my favorites really. Tried to get some variety in the blade styles and the colors and things like that. Um, so let's fire it up, here we go. This is the Watto's Junkyard, Mr. Tyrannus, 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 Gen 2. All the usual profit board settings, all the features. Flash on Clash, because it's a one button setup, you click to do blasters. Um, and this is the Attack of the Clones one. If you uh, press and hold the power off, and you point the blade upwards, and you press and hold power, you will enter the track player. Select preset. Oh, that's the preset. Fine, let's try that again. It's just a long click, I believe. I sense Count Dooku. That changes the font. Accent lighting down the bottom changes as well, speeds up. Sounds well. Master Dooku. Tales of the Jedi Dooku. Different blue. The, um, the accent LED won't ever change colour because it's just an LED, that's all it is. Um, let's keep going through the fonts. And then we're and then we're on to the freebies. The freebies are all from grayscale fonts. Um, I love his work. I think it's great, uh, which is why there's a few of them on here. Super unique, nice and loud. You've also got gesture controls, twist on, twist off. to Dooku. Um, so the profi config for this one, um, I have added the tracks and the quotes and things like that. Those will all be accessible via various combinations of clicking the button. Do I remember what the track player is? Double click power, parallel or down. Let's try that. There we go. So now we're in the track player and you can rotate to select the track. Click to confirm and then it'll play the music and you'll get the soundtrack playing. So um, yeah, the profi config for this one, because a, it's a quite a unique install, the board had to be set up angled, because obviously it lives in the elbow of the um, of the saber, which means that in the config it's set to be angled. Um, so for all of the gesture controls, when it says things like hold it upright, hold it parallel, it's not hold the board upright, it's hold the blade upright, okay? So I've angled the profi board so that it's relative to the blade angle, not the actual board itself. So when it says hold parallel, you point with the blade kind of like that, not with it like that. Okay, so that's parallel and that's vertical and then that's down. Um, 
I'm trying to think if it's worth running through any of the features. There's quite a few features on here, but they're all listed in, in the FET263 button config. Um, so I think that pretty much wraps it up. Oh, let's show you color change quickly. So if we just power on, and then when it's turned on, the color settings are... Why can't I find that for the single button setup? Oh, here we go. Yeah, got it now. Right, <laughs> it's four clicks of power, parallel or down. There we go. Then you can rotate to change color. And it will update the accent LEDs to match as well. I'll just make my red again. There we go. Yeah, so the color change is also present. I completely forgot to mention that. And it's got the usual things. It's got the track player, the quotes player, um, blaster deflect, lock up, lightning block, melt, drag, all of the various features that come with Profi. Profi is a great board. It's my go-to board. Um, so look through the button config, have a play with it. But that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, this is the Gen 2 Watto's Junkyard, Mr. Tyrannus, um, installed by myself with the Goth chassis. Hope you like it. If you want any changes made, Andy, give me a shout. Um, I'll drop this video over to you, take some nice pictures of this one and put it up on the Instagram. Um, but other than that, pretty much wraps up this install. If you want any changes made, give me a shout and I'll make those before shipping it out to you. Uh, we're still waiting on the replacement recharge module. So at the moment, I don't actually have the ability to recharge this Sabre. I think it's on about 20% battery at the moment, um, which actually you can find out. Double click and long click power. Battery level. 26%. Yeah, 26%. So it's going to be running low on volume and brightness at the moment. So any changes that we need to make, let's make them now before it runs out of battery. Um, and then when the parts for the recharge module come in, I'll build that, chuck it in the box and ship all of this back to you. Hopefully you're happy with it. Like I said, any changes, give me a shout. If not, we'll be good to go. Um, thank you for watching, everybody. And um, see you next time. May the force be with you. Thanks, guys. Bye.